The third of our decision one sorting algorithms is called shell sort. We can see here step by step instructions on how to apply shell sort to a list. The first thing we look at is how many items we have in the list, usually numbers, but sometimes it can be letters. If we have, for example, eight numbers, then we just divide by two, so we end up with four sublists. If we have nine items, then again we divide by two, we get four and a half, but we ignore the half, so we end up again with four sublists. We write the sublists. If we had a list of eight numbers, we'd have the first four numbers in sublist one, two, three, four, and then the next four num numbers in sublist one, two, three, four. So the first and fifth items would be in sublist one, the second and sixth in sublist two, and so on. If we had nine items, we would have three in sublist one, the first, fifth, and ninth items. We then sort each sublist using shuttle sort. So the items in that particular sublist, in other words, if sublist 1 had items 1, 5 and 9, these items would then be in the correct order in relation to each other. When we merge the sublists, those three items would still be in the positions 1, 5 and 9 in the list but they would now be in the correct order in relation to each other. For the next pass, we halve the number of sublists. So if we had four sublists in our first pass, we would have two in the second. Again, we ignore remainders. So if, say, we had five sublists in the first one, halving that gives us two and a half, so that means we'd have two sublists. And then we just keep repeating steps two and three until the number of sublists reduces to one. And then we have a final pass where we perform shuttle sort on that last sublist. It appears to be quite an unwieldy and lengthy algorithm, but in reality, it does tend to be a lot more efficient and quicker than shuttle sort itself. We'll work through an example. So here's our list. We have 10 items in the list. So that means five sublists. This is how we decide what's in each sublist. We go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we have two items here, four and one in sublist one. Sublist two is the eight and the nine and so on. We perform shuttle sort on each of these sublists. So first four and one. Clearly, when we compare four and one, four is larger, so they swap. So one comparison, one swap. We continue in the same way. The eight and the nine get sorted using shuttle sort. This time the eight smaller than the nine, so they don't swap. We then move on to sublist three, nine and twelve, and again nine is smaller than twelve, so no swap required. Ten and three next, and as ten is larger than three, we do swap. And then finally, we compare the seven and the six, and again, they're swapped. So at the end of our first pass, we've had five comparisons and three swaps. Because we had five sublists in the first pass, we now have five over two, which is two and a half, and we ignore the half. This means the integer part. So 2.5, the integer part of 2.5 is the two. We ignore the decimals. So now we just label 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, like so. 
So we have, as you can see, the first, third, fifth, seventh, and ninth numbers in sublist one, and the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, and tenth in sublist two. We now shuttle sort both lists. You may want to write sublist one separately somewhere to perform this shuttle sort because obviously it's now a little bit more involved than it was previously when we only had two items in each list in the first pass. The first thing we do is compare the one and the nine and that's the end of the first pass of the shuttle sort isn't it? and we didn't need to swap. We now look at the 6 and the 9 and they do swap because the 9 is bigger than the 6 and because it's swapped we have to go back and compare the 1 and the 6 and they don't swap. We now move along and compare the two 9s. They don't swap so we don't need to go back and compare 9 and 6 and we compare the 9 and the 10 and again it doesn't go back. We do the same now with sublist 2, the 3 and the 8 swap, we then move up and do the 4 and the 8 and they swap so we need to go back and compare the 3 and the 4. We then move to the 8 and the 12 and as there's no swap we don't need to go back any further. Then the 12 and the 7 swap so we need to compare the 7 and the 8 and they swap and because we got a swap we need to compare the 4 and the 7 and they don't swap. Notice that sublist 2 is now sorted and it is the case that every sublist after the end of a pass will always be in the correct order in that sublist. So you can see here that sublist 2 is in the right order and so is sublist 1. The final pass is the whole, is shuttle sorting the whole list. Now this sounds like it could be lengthy, but because we've already performed quite a lot of sorting, this is generally fairly quick, much quicker than if we'd started off with shuttle sort with the original list. The one and three don't swap. The three and six don't swap. The six and four do. So we need to go back and compare the 3 and the 4. 6 and the 9 then don't swap. The 9 and the 7 do, so we need to go back and compare the 6 and the 7. The 9 and the 9 don't swap. The 9 and the 8 do, so we move back. 9 and the 8 again do, 7 and the 8 don't. So we now move on to take the 10, no swap, and the 10 and the 12, no swap. We've now sorted the whole list. See if you can follow shell sort for this one.
list of 10 numbers sorted in exactly the same way as we operated, shall we? Now have a go at the quiz. 